It's lunchtime at Eggvid 2020 and we're here with Carlos from Seminist Seeds. Hi Carlos. Hey, how are you, Bunny? I'm good, good, good. I'm Jodie. Bonnie's back on the other side. Ah, oh, sorry, Jodie. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're both in the same team. Perfect. We're talk broccoli. Yes, well, we, we, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about all our brassica portfolios, starting with broccoli, and then we will jump into cauliflowers to finish up with my favorite crop, which is spinach. Beautiful. So what have we got here? There's a whole lot of um, broccoli that's been... Harvested for samples, and look, I mean, as part of Seminist Vegetable Seeds globally, we had a strong portfolio of different brassica varieties, different crops, we produced uh, sort of different types of broccoli depending on operations, countries and customs around the world. What we have here, uh, despite they look all similar, they, they have different attributes. So should we start so, with the top row? So if we start here, these are all new varieties. We call the 300 family because all the, all the codes of these varieties start for 300. I got a little bit of signs here, 301, 310. 311, 314, and what we are trying to compare is how they perform on the these environments. So we're still a long way to go because we need to understand the seasonality and wh where are they good for, what are the attributes. You see the different sizes, the different thickness, and the dome obviously looks different in, in, in all of them. So we just amazing which is an important part of our role is, is just to find out something different to introduce in the Australian market. Here we had a different set of varieties you're gonna see very different type of broccoli when you compare these two for example. They are, this one is, is probably not enjoying a lot the, the weather conditions here in East Gippsland but this one is is performing a lot better. Yeah that's a much bigger is it would you call it's it? It's much bigger much heavier but is, is important to look at the broccoli, but it's extremely important as well to look at the plant. Yes. So this is, this, these varieties are part of something that we call a high-rise broccoli types, which are originally designed for a machine harvesting operation. Because one of our principles, or one of our targets in Seminis is to produce highly nutritious food for the world, but also to increment the cost efficient in operation for the farmers, you know, to make the farmers' business more efficient, more reliable, reduce the cost in labor, and increase their efficiencies uh, in, in his business, in their business. So our third row here. So our third row here is a traditional broccoli. We have Ironman, which has been a standard variety for a long time. You know, many growers in Australia love it, and in, in, in Victoria and Tasmania. It's, it's, been, it's been for years, for decades with us. So it's a tried and true, tested? Trial, true, tested, grown commercially, globally. I think it's one of the most sellable varieties in the world. Still nowadays, it's been in the market for, I think, more than 10 years, probably 15. And we have two different varieties that we are competing against. This is called Shard. You see, they, they were transplanted at the same time, but this one has is, is, been advancing a lot more than this one. Uh, and this one is heavier than this one. And here we have one that all the customers coming to the East Gippsland field, they had been picking up this one. It's a little bit over mature. It should have been harvested a couple of, uh, probably a week ago, but 1822 is a heavy, easy to harvest uh, broccoli. And the growers like it because the plant is open and, and it's very easy to identify the crown and easy to cut. And when you say heavy, how would it compare in weight from this one here? Uh, we have here, uh, I have some weights, we have here almost 400 grams this mm -hmm. head and here we have 370. Okay. So it's, 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 it's an, important co uh, an important thing to talk about it. and thanks for the question because in Australia we sell broccoli by kilo. Different to New Zealand for example when the broccoli is sell by piece. So that make a huge difference in the, in the, in the broccoli business. Mm -hmm because we, we here in Australia we need heavy crowns to improve the prof profitability of the of the business for the growers. That's great. It's, it, it's amazing to look at, you know, the naked eye looks at that and goes, yeah, there's a whole lot of broccoli, but there's so much that goes into So that. much to go into there, yeah. So I will invite you to follow me and, yeah. and then we will change we're into... we by the microphone, so... Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's change into, into cauliflowers oh, and I will well. show you something very different. 
heading to this so this we're, variety we're, here? we're gonna stop for a while here and this variety is called white text so what i would like to let you know is that as well as we're talking in broccoli in cauliflower there's two different concepts here in australia by tradition the growers love big frame which means big plants that are strong and, like and, and very vigorous this got a good frame but the difference is that traditionally the growers have been looking for a fully wrapped cauliflower that is well protected by the leaves so that's fine we have that genetics at the back of the plot we can have a look but we have been coming with a different concept that is called cordybex and, and cordybex is a new generation of, of, of varieties that are not fully wrapped but a little bit exposed what we look for that is just to increase the efficiency of the crowd when they go to the paddock to harvest because people can see if the variety is ready for harvesting in fully wrapped cauliflowers the crew goes and they need to open up the leaves to see which one is ready and which one is not so that takes time and, and time makes money so we want to reduce the time we want to reduce the money we want to increase the profitability of the business for the growers in Australia so if you come close and look at this you're gonna see that the plant is well protected it's got an amazing color but the crew can see the cauliflower from the top so there's not much time for the people to look they just come yeah it's ready harvested cut it done and dusted okay so now i will ask you to follow me and, and we will have a look at a completely different type of variety Ah, oh, it's beautiful. beautiful day it's a land. beautiful day in paradise, yes. I'm becoming very good at navigating these paths in between the beds. Ah, that's, you know, that, that's fantastic because for us in this industry, this is how we walk every day. So, ah, uh, mud is good. I don't know, it's just. Enjoy your time, get the sun and touch the plants. Normally what, what we used to say is that the plants told to you. So this plant, for example, is strong. It's got a big frame. It's telling me that it's enjoying the weather conditions here. So the court is there. So this is what I wanted to show you. If, when you look at this plant, this plant is fully wrapped. You know, it's fully well protected. So the leaves are all folding the, up. The, the leaves are all wrapping the curd, protecting the curd, and the curd is developing down there. So this one is still not ready, but I will show you something that is already good to go. And that's this, this variety here, Carlos. It's just this one here. That yeah, we, 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 can, we can do the exercise here. Yeah. This I'm is a variety trying. called yeah. Ovin Dolly which we've been trawling over the last couple of uh, years. It's a variety for these sort of conditions, coming out of the summer, getting into the, into the autumn. And it performs really well around mid-June, beginning of July. And, and here, um, and this is the concept, you know, it's, it's fully wrapped, very well protected. This one is still not ready, but we will find one that is, is already here, for example. Have a look at this one. Let me just harvest. One of these big knives. This is what most of the people normally do in the, oh. Oops, don't cut the microphone. <laughs> so, what we have here is a cauliflower that is fully well protected with a nice ripe. And look at that color at the bottom. Stunning. It's just beautiful. You see all these inner what we call an inner jacket or the inner protection is, is fully covered in the cauliflower it's giving that nice touch so when this cauliflower goes to the supermarket what you should see is, is, is something like that you know it's, it's a contrast a contrast between a bright white color mm -hmm. and a green leaf green healthy nice leaf with good veins so it just and from a consumer perspective... It, look, it looks so beautiful. Oh, that's... Yeah, it is. Nature is an artist, isn't she? Yes. So from a consumer perspective, when they're buying a cauliflower that is, in, is, is a good breed like this, what does it mean for the end sort of shelf life in terms of when you get it at the supermarket, you bring it home? Oh, that's, that's an excellent topic, because shelf life is something that we, 
we look very seriously. In Australia, we have operations here in, in, in Victoria with growers harvesting these morning cauliflowers, you know, going into a cool room, putting on a truck, and then dispatching these cauliflowers to, to Queensland. So that's an operation that might take probably 48 hours. By the time this cauliflower goes to the supermarket and some, someone buys the cauliflower, it might be three, sometimes four days. So what we achieve with these genetics is that they will remain white, bright white. The color will stay there for longer, which is a little bit different to previous varieties that we have some years ago when people got used to see that creamy color. Well, that creamy color in seminary genetics is gone. Everything that we have now in our portfolio will stay white for as long as you need it. That's it's just, incredible. it's just, I will test you. I will leave this variety here. You can come in in five, seven days and you will find it exactly like as it is, you know, yeah. bright white. Yeah. Beautiful cauliflower and highly nutritious. All right, where are we heading now? So, Bunny, now I'm going to invite you to the spinach plantings, Beautiful. which I love. You know, this is oh, everything to love such, a, such an important uh, business in Australia. You're going to see we have here, we, we start with summer varieties at the bottom. We came here into shoulder times, you know, shoulder types, varieties that love, you know, that transition between the heat and the, and the cold mm -hmm. or cold to heat. And then at the bottom, there where my friends are, you have, we have the winter varieties. But I want to show you basically a couple of, of nice varieties that we have here. All right. Now I did ask one of the other guys this morning yeah. where the name, how do you name your varieties? And I'm curious to see whether or not there's a different way that every company names them or... Yes, exactly. That's another excellent question, Manny. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, until a couple of years ago, uh, Seminis used to be a, a company with code, with numbers. You know, SB coming from Seminis variety or Seminis vegetables, a number, four digits, like 38, 3580, 2157, 2146, and a couple more uh, letters at the end. So now with the new genetics, the company had the, the, took the decision to name it as an island around the world. Oh, so that's why we have Java here. And you know that Java is a beautiful island. And, 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 and we have- Java is a beautiful spinach. It's a beautiful spinach. It's got a, it's got a full mildew package, which means it's, it's a variety that is highly resistant to, to mildew, which is the main pathogen that destroys crops around the world in spinach. And so this one is planted and picked at what time of this one what this one was planted on the first of April. Mm -hmm. So now is is probably ready for harvesting today. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see it's a very uniform leaf shape. You know all the leaves look exactly like each other. It's it's, it's a very nice color. It's a it's a it's a very erect variety which means that it grows very upright, so it makes easier for the customers to harvest it. And another important topic uh, one is that the cotyledons in this variety remain at the bottom. Uh, because, we'll oh, let me show you here. Okay. You, 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 you might see here that all the cotyledons are laid down at the bottom. Because, believe it or not, this important part of the plant, cotyledons are such an important part of the plant at the beginning of the cycle when, when, when the plant just germinate. But later in the market, you cannot have cotyledons when you harvest. They need to stay on the ground because no one wants to see the cotyledons in the final product. But when, they grow, when the grower comes to harvest and they, he cuts around here, all the cotyledons will remain on the ground. Oh. So that's an important characteristic in our genetics upright varieties with cotyledons flat on the ground. Good to know. But the it's one so that I, the one that I want to show you is, is a variety from the is is more a summer type, which is this one here. So the, look and see. You know, initially it was 2636 SBBB 2636. Now it's called Kona, which is a beautiful island in Hawaii. Gorgeous. So Kona is an island and uh, you, you, you see the difference in size between this, yeah, this one and this shorter. one. This is more shorter. Yeah. 
what is telling us is that this is a variety that doesn't like these cold conditions and what we knew from our breeder is that this variety is more like a summer type you know it loves that late november december january february march well, but that's the hawaiian climate it's cold after hawaiian island <laughs> possibly that's that's a good that's a good uh, connection. connection yeah absolutely but what we most love about this variety is that you know the, the shape of the leaf the texture you know this is what the, the growers call the savoyness you know it's a variety that is get like a cappy sort of it's, it's, it's not totally flat it's a little bit curved it's got all this savoyness on the leaf the texture is nice it makes it look very healthy and nutritious and when it's put in a processing line it processes very well because it doesn't stick against the wall on the washing lines it doesn't stick in the air dryers and when the growers are drying the leaf and it doesn't stick on the plastic bags when it's following to be packed but also it's wet, it weights a lot so it means that it falls into the plastic bag very well and it's easy to pack and is that something Carlos that's um, taken into consideration as the genetics are being worked out? Is, um... look you 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 will be amazed about all the considerations that, that a breeder needs to take into account. So is color is an extremely important attribute for spinach in, in Australia and in other different countries in the world. Australian market is determined and requires a dark green color. You might say, well, that's green and that's green and everything yeah, is green. That's green. And that's, 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 that's green. green. But in reality, when you get deep into the color you need to understand that the darker the better mm. and, and that's consumer perception and that's what people when they go to the supermarket they look for dark green because dark green is, is, is associated in your brain with nutrition with healthy you know with something that is really full of vitamin minerals and, and it's good for your health well, certainly so, looking at that I am imagining it in a beautiful baby spinach salad with a bit of pomegranate seed yes yes so color is important and, and the, the facility to process this in washing lines, the facility to pack it, the facility to harvest it. You know, as, as I said at the beginning, making the life to the customer or the grower as easier as possible is our objective number one. You know, because it's his business. If they win, we win. We want just them to have a great profitability, great yields grace allowed and happy customers at the end of the day and a win-win for everybody win-win for everyone all right where are we on to next well we can just keep walking through the spinach and i will show you a little bit more down there because well, there's new varieties at the bottom lovely and how often does um sorry if this is a silly question but you know there's no silly I'm, questions oh, thank you how so there's new varieties at the end here have they been grown by anyone else yet or are they just a trial here for... It's a yeah, good question. It's not silly. It's actually a smart question. Look, it's, it's, it's a long process that normally takes around two years, sometimes three years. The first time that we saw the variety, we received probably 50 grams of seed from our breeder, John Musem. Say hello to John in, in, in the Netherlands. We hope you are enjoying the time. We're showing you all the your varieties here. So 50 grams of seed is probably just enough to put a one meter, you know. 50 grams of seed is probably this. Yep. So we, we put many of those 50 grams. Then we come with an assessment. We pick which one we think are, are, are sweet within the Australian conditions. This for the next year, we might get 10 bags, 20 bags, 50 bags, and then we're gonna have the opportunity to put bigger plantings. And if after those bigger plantings, the growers give us a thumbs up, they like it, they say, yes, it's what I'm looking for, then we put a forecast in the system and the company knows that we need the variety and they put, they, they develop at a scale production, you know, big production, and then we will have 300, 500, 1,000 bags, 10,000, as much as we can, and that will be a happy days for us. Awesome. All right, so we're heading down this beautiful long road to Yeah, we're heading down to, 
to a variety here. Luckily there's no mud on this side. No. <laughs> All right, which one are we looking for, Carlos? So this one is another island. This one? Yes. And as I told you, at this part of the of the of the trawl, I have more uh, so these winter are the, types. Yeah, this is the taller spinach. This is you see how big it is compared to the ones that we saw there is because this is a winter type. Yes. You know, it's a variety that it was not a fortune to have a, a name, but it's it's, it's called six two o three. So it's a winter type, but the one that I would like to talk to you about it is more this one. Just follow me. I'm joined by the this one. To you, Carlos. We, can't, we can't go anywhere without each other. This, this variety this is, a, is a very vigorous variety, yes. It's called Upolu. So Upolu is, a, is another winter time. It's, it's, if you remember the one that we just saw previously, that was a little bit more full of, more Savoy. It looked like a little bit more three-dimensional. It was sort of a bit yes. raised in the leaf. This one is, is what we call a, a smooth type. It's more flat, but it's thick. It weights probably more than the one that we saw there. So, and it's still an erect plant. If you see here, you know, it grows very upright. The cotyledons are at the bottom, so when the growers come and harvest, it's easy, easy for them, and they're happy days. So this is a winter type, Upolu. The leaf shape is, is, is telling us that it's, it's sort of round and, and pointy, and, and that's good to have uniformity. You know, this is uniformity. You know, all the leaves remain with similar, very close, similar shapes. So round and pointy, and here round and pointy. Yeah. So it's very uniform in this shape, so it looks and it's good in a bag, looks and it's and, and it's very uniform in, in its uh, savoyness. So this is basically what I want to show you, and you know, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk Thanks, Carlos. to the I've world. Thanks, Carlos. I loved talking spinach with you. And uh, just an invitation for everyone in Australia or around the world to come back to East Gippsland. It's, it's a great area. We've been going through a lot over the last six months. You know, you remember we had all these big fires in Australia. They were very close to here. Now we've been tackling a world against the COVID-19, but we will stay here and we will be here for a long time. And we're a resilient, and we're resilient and determined bunch. We will make it work. Great to see you, Carlos. Thank you.